Daisuke, thanks very much for granting some of your time you. here us. Um, you are a student participant at this year's St. Gaun Symposium and what is particularly interesting is you have been visiting the disaster zone in Japan. Um, when you were there with this government delegation, you have seen this, this uh, disaster zone in af 10 days after the disaster occurred. What were your first thoughts that went through your head? Visiting the disaster stricken area. Yeah. When I went to one of the areas, it's called Sendai City, it's by uh, the coast. Um, we went there and really, I don't know if the expression is appropriate or not, but it was exactly like what I saw in old photos of what Japan looked like after the war. As far as you know, the horizon goes, it's just rubbles. There's nothing there. But it used to be a very quiet uh, fishing village. And I was really devastated to see that in, in Japan. I believe that it was a developed country that is ready for natural disasters. But what I saw was just beyond what I could have ever imagined. And But the people there, I think uh, some foreign media has uh, reported, and I'm very thankful for that, but the people there are very resilient. The northeastern area is especially known for being very strong and resilient because they go through very hard winters. So I was very shocked by what I saw before my eyes, but I was at the same time, you know, they, they gave me courage that you know, the Japanese people are really you know, taking this in a very uh, resilient manner. So you're an engaged young Japanese citizen and when, when you've seen this, this disaster and now ahead of you and ahead of Japan uh -huh. and the people now to rebuild this country, what, what, what kind of opportunities does that offer for you personally to contribute to this rebuilding of your own country? Yes, I think really just like in America, you know, pre 9-11 and post 9-11, it's a completely different world. For my generation, you know, it happened on March 11. So in Japan, we call it 3-11, actually. It's, kind of, it's a very big turning point for Japanese society in the country of Japan. And there are many, many areas, the reconstruction of Japan, and balancing reconstruction with uh, fiscal consolidation. Consul so, you know, very difficult tasks that we have to tackle but really for example like the experience that we get in this symposium uh, it's various views from various countries I think I can we can learn a lot from that and people like me who have been bestowed with the chance of joining this kind of experience I think there's a lot that I can take back to my country and uh, I want to contribute hopefully in the future as a politician in Japan to the rebuilding of the country, which will take decades. So my life, most of it will be dedicated to the rebuilding of Japan. Talking about uh, policy making in Japan, um, people in Japan, and that is quite unusual, I've heard, um, publicly um, expressed anger about the government and how they have handled the crisis. Do you think there's going to be a permanent shift in how policy making or how the discourse between public and politicians um, is being made in the future or what do you think? I think everybody hoped that there will be drastic changes in the Japanese political system because of the disasters. Currently it's not happening yet but I think many more Japanese citizens are aware that political leadership is essential in the coming years to rebuild Japan. So I think these kinds of uh, revelations that the people are having are going to be reflected in the coming elections. And I think this will definitely lead to a gradual uh, change in the Japanese policymaking system. And I think it will make uh, Japan, Japan's uh, political system much better than what it has been in the past. So I think the prospects are bright. Japan has experienced, especially in, in the 90s and the early the years of the new decade, um, a long period of s a political stagnation and economical underperformance. 
Do you think uh, this earth uh, the tsunami and the subsequent uh, nuclear disaster will change anything in this regard? I mean, are policymakers now really willing to use this this turning point in history of Japan after the Second World War as a as a chance to move on, really to change something, really at the heart of the economy and the political processes? I think they are still struggling with this, and you know the the old system has been very strong and it takes a lot of time to completely reform the old system but I think the process is is proceeding uh, behind the scenes very rapidly so I'm I'm forecasting that within five years there will be a big political reshuffling of the system and the current political parties and I think that is going to be the beginning of a rapid change in the Japanese system. So I'm, I'm very confident about that. Um, you as a future leader, you already have or you will have a lot of power. Um, what are you going to do with it? I will use it entirely. I will use my life to contribute to make Japan's tomorrow brighter than it is today. So, specifically, I'm hoping that I'll run for office within five years. And if I do, I will invest my entire life and energy into rebuilding Japan and making Japan better. Just as a, as a last question, talking about the St. Gallen Symposium and now the, the, the few days you've spent in St. Gallen so far, can you describe us in three words, maybe, what your impression is three so words. far? Three words, three adjectives. Oh, that's very difficult. Uh -huh. Sounds called in three separate words, right? I think it's diversity, revelation, and I think it is hope that I see in this symposium. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.